Okay, let's start with this lecture. Single phase full wave uh, half controlled rectifier with inductive load. Now you'll find that in the uh, when we studied the uh, full wave rectifier, we put two thyristors here, okay, and we used to synchronize this uh, thyristor, this and this, together, and also to synchronize these two thyristors together, right? We said okay. Why do we need? Why should we add two thyristors? We can add only one thyristor, okay, and the other thyristor can be replaced with a diode, and the diode will be on automatically if the voltage applied on this uh, diode is positive, right? So here we can uh, keep resources and use diodes instead of thyristors, and say at this point thyristor one receive the signal. So here we have alpha alpha one. Now what happens here when thyristor one when the volt, when the when the voltage is positive? So we expect that uh, the current should move in this direction. But thyristor one has no signal at this point, so it's it will be off. Okay. Once it's off, what happens? This will be open circuit, and the output voltage will be how much? Will be zero. At this point, thyristor one receives the signal, and then directly the current will flow in this direction right and then the output voltage will be this portion so here you'll find that thyristor 1 and diode 2 are conducting at this point at this moment here the voltage will be negative once the voltage is negative diode 1 will be conducting at this point directly after this point diode 1 will be conducting but here thyristor 2 is uh, thyristor 2 is not conducting because it didn't receive the signal yet and here we have circulating current you'll find that the current is uh, flowing in this direction will keep moving in this direction why because the output is inductive load so the current will be keep flowing in this uh, direction so at this point th uh, diode 1 and thyristor one is conducting but the output voltage is zero but the current there is current this is a very good point and uh, it's different from the previous one if we have uh, if you remember we have thyristors the output voltage became negative but now here the output voltage is zero no problems okay and we get rectified voltage at the end so this is another good point in this rectifier the half controlled rectifier the output current is positive. We have current because we have inductive load, so this will keep conducting. Okay, diode one and thyristor one. Now, coming back here to this point, here we have thyristor one was conducting and diode one was conducting. Okay, once thyristor two received the signal directly, diode one and thyristor two will be conducting. So the current was flowing in this direction, was like this circulating. Once Thyristor 2 receive the signal, so directly will go this way. Okay, it will be going this way. Because now thyristor 2 receives its signal. So here, thyristor 2 and diode 1 are conducting. What happens at this moment here? After the voltage it became positive on the input, uh, the voltage on the voltage potential will be uh, positive so we expect that diode 2 will conduct at this point so here diode 2 conducts directly but thyristor 2 keeps conducting because the output current is positive okay so here's circulating current on the output so this will keep moving in this direction until the next cycle once thyristor 1 receives the signal what happens You'll find that the current was moving in this direction it will be going in this direction again so here at this moment diode 2 and thyristor 1 is conducting and the positive portion will go to the output now if you look at the input current you'll find that it's different compared to the compared to the previous full way uh, full control rectifier that one was plus minus i out here we have plus I out, zero minus I out, right? The output current is positive, which is plus I out, 
okay all the time but when the current is circulating here and here you'll find the input current is zero and this will be very close to what to a sine wave so this is for the uh, single phase full wave half controlled rectifier with inductive load same thing uh, will happen uh, for a three phase half controlled rectifier let's have a look at this uh, half controlled rectifier with inductive load here again uh, if the input voltage if we have va we have to wait for the signal like let's say thyristor one is conducting okay and va is greater than v b and b c then this will move through thyristor one okay but here it will go to the negative directly to the smallest value either v b v c or v a so the one with the smallest voltage will take over and will conduct the diode but on the upper side it will be the thyristor if the thyristor is conducting if we have signal on the thyristor then yes now let's have a look at this one with inductive load if we have a small firing angle which is a smaller which is uh, smaller than uh, 60 degrees now look at this uh, here at the bottom line here this will conduct directly this will be how much v a c because this is v a and this is v c and VA is conducting at this point at this point so the output is VAC but here on the upper side VA needs to wait for thyristor 1 to be conducting which is conducting at this point we say this is a small firing angle so the output voltage will be something like this so only the upper side will be clipped here same thing VB and VC is conducting of course because the lower side is diode so here this is VAC here it's VAB and this one is VBC and here it's the negative of this one which is VBA and here finally we have VCA right this is VCA because this is VC receive the signal and a is conducting no worries from the bottom uh, side is what is diode right and here is vcb and so on and so forth now if you look at here i put a figure for the uh, conducting uh, thyristors and diodes here you'll find that thyristor one is conducting the upper side and diode two thyristor one is conducting to va and diode 2 which is conducting to VB so that's why it's VAB right and from here to here you'll find well don't care about these numbers it's just the same value just I magnified this because to make uh, to see the difference so here we have diode 3 and thyristor 1 when because VC became smaller than VB then diode three take over and conduct v uh, c and then the output voltage became v a c then and so on and so forth this will be conducting without no problems so this will be thyristor two and here we have diode one here thyristor three and here we have uh, diode two okay and this will repeat the cycle from here so each thyristor of these will keep conducting for how long for 120 degrees and each diode also will keep conducting for 120 degrees now let's go again here and see if we have uh, the same scenario but with a firing angle which is greater than 60 degrees now we have a greater firing angle and we expect that here for example this is VA okay and here we have VB okay and here the output is how much here this is v a c no now what happens at this point v a is conducting and v b is conducting so this will be v a b now v a b will not appear because the firing angle is very large so this will not appear on the output but here that the, the point is from here to here you'll find that we have circulating current we have circulating current between the load and the thyristor and the diode here you'll find that thyristor 3 and diode 
three are conducting and there is circulating current with the load okay with the output current because the current is conducting the current is uh, in the, the load is inductive and the current is positive on the output so here we have a circulating current and the output will be zero now until vc receive the signal here vc is conducting by the way without uh, on the negative side is conducting because the diode but here va receives the signal very late at this point you'll find that va received the signal here so thyristor one is conducting here and then the output voltage became what vac right because vac is ready all the time vc the lower side is ready no problems so you'll find that here we have always the lower side vac so this will keep conducting until the next thyristor receive the signal so you'll find that this will hit the zero line at this point once this hit the zero line the next diode which is diode one will be conducting so diode one will take over from diode three because va now is smaller than vc then at this point from here to here you'll find that diode one thyristor one are conducting and there is circulating current between the load and diode one and thyristor one then after this point you will find that what you will find thyristor two is conducting then once thyristor two is conducting so thyristor two diode one are conducting and then the output will be how much v b a right so this is v b and this is v a so the output will be v b a and so on and so forth here's the same thing v c b because at this point what happens thyristor three and diode two are conducting and the output is how much vc which is this portion this portion here okay vc b and this is b is conducting as well because uh, we said diode 2 is conducting so vc b is the output voltage again from here to here we have zero volt and also we have circulating current between diode 2 and thyristor 2 okay diode 2 and thyristor 2 and the load so again if you want to calculate this uh, average voltage so you can find this uh, portion here and take the integration without any problem we obtained this one before and no need to repeat it but the difference only because we have uh, inductive load and we expect that the output will be negative but no here it's not negative because the half wave rectifier on the lower side on the negative side yeah, it's not control rectifier, it's just a diode rectifier. So the lower side here is always ready to, to conduct once one of them is smaller than the other. So the diode will be conducting without any problem. I hope that you enjoyed this lecture and uh, I'll see you uh, next time.